comfortable. Whew. Nice little coffee. Right. I heard you say you found the story all tucked away in the back of the room, been lost for years, far away from the glory. In the midst of our day-to-day -day routine In the corner of our minds Hello everybody, how you all doing? Right, I promised you a book review So a book review you shall have It's a bit more of a, maybe a book review stroke comparison really Because I've got four very similar books Uh that have been, been written over the years, from the first being 1978, which was a book that I grew up with, and then uh, going on from there till 2010. Uh, most of these books are still readily available. You'd be able to find them on, uh, you might have them on Amazon, you'd be able to find them on eBay or other book, uh, online bookshops, so just have a little look through. And weirdly enough, one of the oldest ones is one of the more readily available ones. Anyway, I digress. So, let me put my specs on. There we go. So, to start off with this book review, you know, I hope you're all safe and well anyway. Still stuck in this lockdown. This might give you something to do. Buy some cheap books. The first one I'm going to speak about today is a good old faithful book written by very good old naturalist and a very keen fisherman. He's got some great fishing books out. You should have a little look at. Um, I think I've got a couple in my bookcase here, as you can see. Got a few, a few books. And this one's written by a guy called Hugh Falcus, and it's called Nature Detective. Now I'll put all the ISBN numbers in the description below. But if you Google these titles, they'll come up. This, this is a, it's a good old book. Okay, Hugh Falcus. This, is, this was written in 1978, this one. This is a first edition copy. And there he is on the back, the old boy. Look his dog. As I say, very keen fisherman, very good fisherman. And this was sort of, there are other books before this, but this was sort of a bit of a benchmark for the sort of new age, um, from my point of view anyway, from sort of, I was born in 1970. Yeah, now 50. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, so this was written 40, 40 odd years ago. Nearly 50 years ago. And uh, it's sort of the forerunner for the other three books. Because you can see some similarities in the other books. Now, this is sort of set up in, uh, in environments, really. Um, it speaks a lot about tracking. There's quite a lot about tracking in there, which my next book review will go over two tracking books. Um, oh, love the smell of books. Is that weird? Okay, this goes over all different environments. Let's have a quick, I'll quickly read through it for you so you can see what you're going to be getting. Um, it goes through the coast, deserts, Woodlands, talks about birds, and forests, um, really nicely set out book. And this is written in the style a naturalist would read it in. As after all, this is what this book review is all about. It's about basically books that can get you started, your foot in the door, into becoming a naturalist. Okay, and this is a, a good old book. This is the one I sort of cut my teeth on really, and uh, one that many of you will probably know and may have in your bookcase, but this is one to keep an eye out for in like thrift shops or um, charity shops, usually pops up in there, if it ever pops up I always buy it. Okay, so this goes through different environments really, and it's more 
as I say, in the lines of being written by a naturalist. So it's written in the style as he would t talk about it. So that's quite a good old book. It's well worth having that in your bookcase. Now, the books that the next books that are coming up are books more like what I was talking about in the last video that I'll put a I'll put a link up to that. And that's we've all become housebound at the moment. This is being filmed in the time of lockdown. We can go out for our once a day walks in a in a wild area close to our homes or you know around the towns or villages where we live. And also in our back gardens, we can spend time in our back gardens. Now these books will tell you how to go about looking for wildlife, go about identifying it, maybe collecting it, sometimes keeping it, um, different codes of conduct, being safe in the wilderness, etc., etc. Little bits and pieces like that. And the Hugh Falcons book was mostly. Um, sort of quite rigid in its writing. So, as I say, it's written by a naturalist. So it's written how he would have, he would have spoke about each environment. But the next ones I'm gonna bring up, no particular order. Um, now this one, we're getting into the realms of what to do and how to be a nature detective. And it's written by a very prominent natural historian, a very clever guy. A very good naturalist and uh, a TV front man for our beloved watch series. So winter watch, spring watch, you know, you know the score. And that is Mr. Chris Packham, who I'd like to say has spent a bit of time around my house doing a TV show filming my spiders. Okay, so this goes over, this was written in 2010, this book. You can find this in most uh, like second-hand book online stores and it's written about again in different environments which they all seem to go from that theme from the old Hugh Falcons book but it also goes into depth of kit and environments clothing okay I'll read the contents out so it's basically the forwards by Chris Packham the web of life, weather and sky, what a naturalist needs, close to home, farm and field, scrubland and heathland, grassland, mountain and hillside, lake and river and stream, and then the coast, beaches, cliffs, coastal wetlands and ocean. Goes through tundra and ice and desert. So it goes through a lot of, a lot of environments. It's a very good book, very well written. It's got some lovely photographs in there so this is more sort of aimed between for all ages really rather than Hughes which is more of an adult's book this goes through all ages because you can point to things show your children tells you about you know plants biology okay and all bits and pieces like that so this is a really good one to sort of get if you've got some kids and they're really interested in wildlife and Becoming an amateur naturalist, you never know, they might become the next uh, Sir David Attenborough. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Be out retired then and live off them like they've lived off you. Um, so, yeah, really good book. Again, I'll put the details for this book in the, in the information below. So, the next one is one called. God, the old beard's coming on, isn't it? Look. My moustache is getting in my mouth. Anyway, the next one is the new amateur naturalist. Now, I'm doing this one first, okay, before you're, you're probably thinking, the new amateur naturalist, well, what happened to the old one? I'll do that next. There's a reason for it. So, this is another great book, and I'll read the bit on the back while I'm holding it up here, so you ain't got to look at my handsome face. Being a naturalist is all about combining different skills, tricks of the trade and investigative techniques, says TV wildlife Nick Baker, uh, wildlife expert Nick Baker. Um, it's, he's sharing his uh, field craft skills for budding naturalists of all ages. So it's choosing the right equipment and kit and clothing, understanding the basic natural history of the animal and plant kingdoms, very important, 
hands-on activities and investigations that can be done at home, very important at the moment, and how to observe mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish, insects, and plants close up. So, this again, following on from Chris's book, is written by a guy called Nick Baker, as I said, who is another really, really good and prominent natural historian and naturalist from the UK. Brilliant guy, really nice fella, really approachable. Um, he's got a great resource on Instagram where he does talks to different naturalists and stuff like that. That's really good. Uh, he puts a lot of stuff up on social media. All, the, all around, generally, a really nice chap. And it just gives you the skills of taking you through from things like tracking to feeding signs, looking at bones. You know, same as the uh, Chris Packham one, really. It tells you about fish and spiders and you name it. It's got it. And also it's got little things in here like um, making a formicarium, which is uh, where you can keep ants. And that's quite a big hobby as well, keeping ants, weirdly enough. If you look online, ant keeping. Okay. And a formicarium is a place where you keep ants. And that's named after that because of an ant. It, the uh, acid that it squirts out is formic acid. Okay, that's its protection. So it's a formicarium. Very interesting. Lovely book. Lots of pictures. Not as many pictures as Chris's book. Chris's book's sort of aimed... Um, it's an RSPB book, so you might be able to get that in RSPB stores, Chris's book. Um, but it's aimed at more of the younger view, uh, your younger viewers, children of the house. But also, it's really, really good resource. Can't have any, you can't have too many books. Okay, this one, again, is a really good book, aimed at more of the adults, really, but also it's full of fantastic photographs and information that you can read to your kids, and when you take them outdoors, you know, you can fill them full of fantastic facts, just like JP does, with different ways of catching things. It tells you how to make a moth trap. Yeah, it's a really good book. Very interesting. Written by Nick Baker, and the foreword takes me into the next book, book very nicely as the foreword was written by Lee Durrell slurp of coffee time or Darjeeling coffee as old Desmond calls it ah lovely so this takes us to probably my favourite nature detective book or amateur naturalist book because it is the amateur naturalist book the, the Classic Practical Guide to the Natural World, written by Gerald and Lee Durrell. There we go. Sadly, De uh, Gerald Durrell's passed away, but Lee Durrell is still about, and they run the Jersey Zoo. They formed the Jersey Zoo, which is a great, great zoo. They do a lot of uh, good work there. Um, well worth a visit if you're ever at, in Jersey. But this is my favourite nature detective book. This is brilliant. This is packed full of information. Um, it's written in the same sort of vein. It goes into um, different environments. So the naturalist on home ground, which is what we want to look into, because obviously we're all trapped at home, and it will give us something to do. You can have a little look around your local patch, and find out what's going on now. And this book will help you do it. Okay. It goes meadows and hedgerows. My favourite sort of environment. Meadows and hedgerows. Shrublands. Grasslands. Desert. Tundra. Deciduous woodlands. Coniferous woodlands. Tropical forests. Mountains. Ponds and streams. Marshland. Coastal wetlands. Cliffs and dunes. Smooth shores. Rocky shores. Seas and oceans. Okay, so fantastic book. And this was first printed in 1982. So I've had one of these in my bookshelf for most of my life. I'll pick, pick the odd one up when I see it cheaply. I mean, this book cost me five pounds from a second hand store a long time ago. Um, so it's not an expensive book and you will find this online. No shadow of a doubt in many of its forms. It's been reprinted quite a few times and weirdly enough, this is one of the oldest books, but the most readily available. 
the Hugh Falcus one, it's a bit hen's teeth, but it's a very good book to have in your bookcase. Again, the Chris Packham and the Nick Baker books, I don't know whether they're out of print. I'll have to have a look. I don't know if they're out of print now, but you'll find them in second-hand bookstores or online. There's some good, good book resources online. But The Amateur Naturalist, you'll get everywhere. Cheap as chips. Brilliant book. Best one to get. It's a DK, um, DK book. And the pictures in there are fantastic. And it goes over everything, this one. Again, you know, different things to find in a woodland in autumn. Bits about orangutans, ponds and streams, different things you can find in ponds. Very, very well written. So, as I say, this is the one to probably get. Go for this one. I'll put the ISBN number down below so you can check it out. Just tap that into the old tippy tappy and it'll uh, direct you to this book. I'll just put in The Amateur Naturalist by Gerald and Lee Durrell. You'll definitely get it. But this is the one to have. So, Maybe, very cheaply, you can get your kids or get yourself sorted out and get into nature and become a naturalist. It's a bit like a job in nature expert, really. So a few of the things you'll probably need is one of these. Get yourself a, an eyeglass. I used to carry one of these around all over the place when I was a kid. As my parents would tell you, I had an old silver hooped eyeglass with a bamboo handle. God knows where it's gone. I'll try, I'll try to find it everywhere, but I've had that up to a few years ago. But this is these are reasonably cheap. This is a times four, I believe, um, magnifying glass. Put one of these in a child's hand, you open up a whole new world. Okay, whole new world. I used to lay on the grass and look at stuff through a, a magnifying glass for flipping hours when I was a kid. Love it. So yeah, all you need is a magnifying glass. And a book, cheap as chips. I think this was less than a fiver, this, this glass. You can get other ones, loops, um, jewellers loops, which can cost quite expensive, can go up to about £40. And I use an 8 times and a 10 times jewellers loop. Well, I'll show you that later in a different video. I don't want to bore you too much. But anyway, so get yourself out. Have a little walk outside, in the outdoors, in nature. And hopefully that will give you a bit of inspiration to start looking at things a little bit more closely. I, haven't, I hope I haven't uh, bored the bits off you. And uh, that's the end of my first book review. I was a bit nervous about doing that really because I haven't really done a book review before. And uh, they're a funny old series of books, naturalist books, to, uh, to, to talk about because there's no storyline in there. Okay, But again... Look at my books behind me. I've got everything now from poisonous plants to axe books to wilderness survival books to why not eat insects books. So I'll do a book review every now and then. Keep an eye on this, this little series and see if I'll get any better as I go along. Probably not. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. You take care. Stay safe and stay sane. And don't forget The Amateur Naturalist book by Lee and Gerald Durrell. Brilliant book. Get on the old tippy tap in there and order yourself a copy. All the best, you take care.